Hello scrappers and planet lovers, Tin Man here with another video. So today what I want to do is take apart one of these microwave ovens. Find them a lot on garbage day and surprisingly to me, a lot of people pass them up and I don't know why. The nice thing about this is I can actually bring this in to a scrapyard as is. It's 100% scrappable. I would get tin shred price, which is about 10 to 13 cents a pound. And this thing weighs about four pounds. It's easy to compact into my truck. It's got a nice storage area if I want to put more steel in there. However, before I do that, there are some goodies on this that I want to take off first. There's a nice power cord here. There's some brass in here. There may be some aluminum. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to, first of all, take it apart for you, show you how to identify the metals, and more importantly, how to maximize your profit and divert this entire thing from the landfill. So here we go. The first thing, word of caution, there may be a lot of crumbs and things inside of it, so you may want to dump it out first. Um, I'm going to open this, and as you can see, I have two trays, and easiest way to recognize what metal this is, is I'm going to first of all just put a magnet to it, so this is magnetic, so this is going to go into my tin shred. The bottom tray here, sometimes these are aluminum. Sometimes they will actually say on the back that they're aluminum. Um, if I put a magnet to this one, unfortunately you can see it sticks. Aluminum is non-magnetic. So if this was aluminum, this would be going for about 45 cents a pound. It's not a pound, but definitely uh, throwing it into my aluminum pile, going to get uh, more money for this. However, this is still going to be tin shred, so 10 to 13 cents a pound, so still not going to complain, better than nothing. Inside of it here, there is a nice storage unit. I'm not even going to focus on anything here. Um, there is a little bit of glass on the door, but the nice thing, this is, as you can see, magnetic, the handle, the strip here, and Scrapyards are not going to say anything about a little bit of glass on this. So the nice thing about this outer frame is I can bring this in as is. What I want to do is focus on the dials. There are two dials on here as you can see. I just pop them off. These are plastic, but you do want to make sure you get these screws. So just going to quickly take a screwdriver, open these up. There is always going to be some nice brass on those handles sometimes some silver contacts. And what I like to do with my screws is I have a container back here that I put them in. You can see this container is almost full. Nice thing about this is once this is full, this is almost nine, 10 pounds worth of uh, steel. So it does go into my steel pile. Uh, steel is worth a little bit more than tin shred right now, about two cents a pound more, um, but uh, even if you were just to throw this in with your tin shred, you're still going to make money on that. Uh, various bolts in there. Uh, I do keep some of the nuts and some of the screws if they're in good working condition. But uh, these ones, very small. I don't need them anymore. The nice thing about stra scrapping, I have not had to get screws and washers and nuts or any of those things for years now. So that's great. Okay, so now my levers are out, they're ready to go. I just wanna pop the bottom off of here. The nice thing about these is they're actually very similar to your microwaves. They've got an outer shell that has a couple screws on it. Sometimes you do, they will have maybe safety screws on it. Uh, and in that case, uh, you will have to purchase a L key set um, some people just grind them off, but uh, sometimes the bolts will have like a little uh, star in, in the middle of it. So these things are also a great thing for scrappers. As I said, it's a Mastercraft L key security set. Very cheap, but definitely saves you on time. Just going to get the last couple screws here. So very easy, as I said. Some people use a drill. I don't use a drill to open this. I just find it very therapeutic. And I don't even have to go all the way around and open the entire shell here. I'm just getting a couple screws just to make it easier for myself. Okay, you can see it does just fold around there. Last one I think I need to get. There we go. I'm just gonna pry this up now. Sometimes your legs do have a screw in them as well, but not this one. 
Okay, so I'm just gonna pry this with a screwdriver now. Open it. There it goes. Okay, pop it up. Use leverage. There we go. There are screws in the leg, but that's okay. So, this shell, nice thing about this is if I take this shell, now that it's off, I can either fold it up and put it back on, but I'm just gonna leave it. So, actually, just gonna fold it out of the way here. And what I wanna do is I wanna focus on the inner panel right there. So you can see, there's some wire inside of here. There's a couple brass connectors. So I'm gonna just pull these out right now. Okay, and I'm just gonna also cut around the cord, get all of the cord that I can. There we go. One little screw inside of here that I need to get off. So just it connects all the dials. So there's another screw, goes into my steel. And very simple, as you can see here, just pull off all of my cords, cutting them. And I'm just gonna feed this cord through, use a pair of pliers, just to get all of the cord. I'm just gonna quickly Snap it, pull it through, as you can see, I just use leverage and I'll just kind of fold it up, it'll slide through, there you go. So some nice clean wire you can see there. And if I miss some of it, I can just go in the other end, there you go, there's the rest of it because I want to make sure I get all of it. And the rest of this is actually just going to be as is, put that back on snaps back and now I also have a really nice carrying case so I could put stuff in there like some of my motor uh, steel parts of my motor I'll throw in there some of my little parts it's and bits like this this came off of a vacuum motor so easy to store it in there maximize my weight minimize my space which is great so the first thing I do want to look at is this wire here this is what we would call 60% copper recovery appliance wire. There are two categories at a scrapyard, 40% and 60%. Because this is only one layer of uh, plastic coating and two strands of copper inside, there is more copper inside of this than plastic. And this is currently right now going in London, Ontario, Canada for $2.13 a pound. It's not a pound, but I definitely put it into a bag with my 60% appliance wire, it adds up quickly. I also will take off the brass prongs. These will go into brass. Brass right now is going for $2.85 a pound Canadian. Some people leave these on for the weight. I pull them off, very simple. All I do is actually just take a pair of pliers and I'll just use leverage and bend it off. So there is a piece and I will separate them as I said. Got a really nice collection of brass prongs right now, which is awesome. So I do have, as I said, a nice cord. I am gonna cut this little teeny bit off because it is exposed already. I'll put this into my um, number two copper wire, which is going for $4.44 a pound Canadian. Not a lot there, but like I said, I store it up in a bag and it adds up too. So nice little power cord here. The last thing I wanna look at are my little dials here. So I do have some more right here, single strand, wire so this is all going to be my 60 percent copper recovery so i do also want to make sure i do pull these caps off because the problem with me if i put it in my 60 percent scrap yards might look at this and say because of the plastic um it's going to be 40 percent so if i was to throw this into 40 percent with this on they're not going to say anything but again 60 percent they want less plastic so i do cut these ends off if I can't uh, unwind them, and then I will throw the top heads because there is brass under there into my 40%, which is currently going for $1.23 a pound. So still something. Last thing I wanna look at is you can see there are a couple knobs here. Anytime you have knobs 
or bells here. This is a really nice bell. You can hear that nice little chime. There is gonna be some brass in here. If I take these little connector prongs off, you can see some nice yellow brass. And what I'm gonna do for this video is I'm just gonna open up this one. Um, I'm just gonna use a hammer just to show you what's inside. Um, I will take it apart a little bit later, but some nice brass prongs there. This thing, I do wanna put a magnet to it. There is a little bit, as you can see, of steel there. But this wheel, if I can open this up, I'm just gonna take a pair of pliers. I'm gonna show you one of the silver contacts that I can see. So I'm just gonna fold it back like such and turn it for the camera. You can see right there, there are two. So that dot, you can see that dot right there. That is actually silver. There's two of them. There's another one on the bottom there that's just folded. You can see that. And I will, once I open that up, I will take those. I will actually cut those little dots off. There's a small amount of silver on them. So those are called silver contacts. And I have been collecting them. One day what I want to do is hit it with some nitric acid and make it into a silver bouillon. So there is some silver on those as well in the box. Like I said, I'm just gonna rake this with a hammer just to show you the nice brass and things in here. I do wanna make sure I have safety glasses on and just gonna, one of my greatest tools in my scrapping arsenal is my hammer. Okay, so there is inside of here, you can see a little bit of brass. I am gonna take that off of that as well. So get that brass out. It's just held in by a pin once I take the screws off. This one as well, there you can see, this is the other part of it. There are a few silver contacts right inside of here once I pop that up, but there's some more brass. And all I would do with this is clean that off. I just smash the rest of the plastic off and get this brass and put it into my clean brass. The bell here, I am gonna open it up for you. The nice thing is you can see, it is metal on the outside, but there is some really nice brass. And I might not be able to get it on this video, but there, there are some pins to make it easier. You can see those pins are just twisted. Just gonna grab them with my pliers and just kind of bend them so that this will unlock. Um, and then hopefully it makes it easier. So there you go. That is now open. I'm gonna take the outer coating off. So this is now going to go into my steel pile. As you can see, the whole thing is magnetic. Some people will use the bell. <laughs> May I bring this to school and annoy uh, the other teachers? I don't know. But there is my mechanism. There is right inside of there some dials. Just going to hit this off. So there you go. Look at that. Watch this. There is another silver contact. This is actually copper. So once I take the silver contact off, I will actually cut this and this will go into my number two, um, actually number one copper. It'll go into my number one, which is actually going for about $4 and 75 cents a pound. So this is actually not brass, this one. This one's copper pronged. This one is brass, okay? So notice the difference in color. There's your gold, there's your copper color. But also, this one has a really nice silver contact on it as well. So some great silver from that. Took me 12 minutes to take it apart. Some nice silver, some great 60% um, copper wire. I've got some really nice tin shred, another appliance diverted from the landfill and an easy, quick, scrappable item. So. Hopefully with this video you've learned something. Please don't pass up those microwave ovens anymore. They're a great source of scrapable material and a great item to divert from the landfill. So hope you enjoyed the video. Please comment down below, like, share, subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next one. Tin Man out.